Yo, what's up guys? Sorry it took me so long to come out with another video, but I had to transition from making them on my phone to making them on my PC, so that's why it took me so long. I have a couple videos that I've been waiting to share with you guys. You guys have asked for these videos. You have asked for a video on how to control your nerves, especially while you're aiming. And you've asked for a video on decision making. I will get those out as soon as I can, and it will be very helpful. But you also asked for this video on settings. So let's go ahead and get into it. And I know my voice sounds a little weird right now, but I'm working on it, okay? Trust me. <laughs> All right, welcome guys. This is Brookstyle. Um, you guys were requesting a settings video, so I'm gonna make one for you guys. Um, I don't always make videos quite like this that go into my settings. I also have videos to help you improve on YouTube. Um, I really highly recommend you go check them out. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into my settings real quick. And a lot of settings, there are settings that are going to help you out a lot, but a lot of them are personal preference guys. So it's not a big deal. Just find out what you like. Um, let me go over some of the main settings that actually matter. So damage numbers, you can have stacking or floating. Some people have both so that you can really see how much you're doing. Some people turn the damage numbers off because they want to focus on their accuracy and not really think about, not look at the numbers because the numbers can be distracting. So some people actually turn them off so they can just focus on their accuracy to make sure they're hitting their target. I have most stacking, that's like very normal. Um, let's see, I have weapon auto cycle on empty. I have that off because it was very annoying. Auto sprint I have on so it doesn't wear on my controller. Um, taking damage closes death box menu. So if you're on a death box and someone shoots you, normally it would automatic you automatically take you out of the death box but I have that off so that I can still get whatever I want in the death box if I get shot and then I leave the death box manually real quick the first time I changed that I think I, I easily got died to someone shooting me in the death box because I wasn't really ready for it and but yeah you just have to hit B and get out of the death box as soon as you get what you want uh, obviously streamer mode you can Put that to your liking if you don't want to see other people's names or your name. Do not have any of that on. And the last one on this page will be colorblind mode. A lot of people mess with this and they like the different lightings colorblind mode offers. So all of these have a different color to things and they can kind of change the color of the map as well. I just have it off because I never found any other color settings that helpful but other people really do and they say it makes a big difference so that's completely up to you um, my stick layout is default i tap to use right here so normally it's this hold to use tap to reload but i changed i changed it to tap to use hold to reload so when i hold to reload if i'm next to a door it doesn't open the door normally if you're next to a door and you try to tap X to reload your gun, it would open the door. So that's why I have tap to use, hold to reload. Um, crouch button, some people have it on hold. Don't really see the point. I guess for spam crouching, they would have it on hold. Um, same with the aim button, trigger dead zones. I actually have none here. I don't really like that. I'm gonna put it. Uh, I don't know about that one. Okay, and look sensitivity. This is probably one of the most common things people look at when it comes to FPS shooter games. They want to know sensitivity. They want to try to figure out the best sensitivity for them as if changing the sensitivity will make you better. Maybe it will, but it's, don't ever go off of what someone else's sensitivity is. You need to... I play a lot, so my sensitivity is pretty high, and 
I'm used to it. If you don't play a lot, having a high sensitivity can really throw you off. But you just need to find out what sensitivity works best for you. There are really good players, somewhat pro players, that have that still play on a 4 or even maybe a 3, but some that play on a 4, right? So just find out the sensitivity that works for you. Um, for optic settings, I don't have that, it's all default. Response curve, classic, look dead zone, small. I have vibration off because the vibration be kind of distracting. I feel like it's not really necessary. Some people are addicted to the vibration and, you know, they have to have it on because they're so used to it. Advanced look controls. I don't mess with advanced look controls, obviously. Um, but I don't think it's really necessary unless you're really serious about it and you play other games as well with a certain sensitivity and all that. I don't think advanced look controls is that necessary. Brightness. I want brightness. I want it to be a little brighter than normal just so I can see into dark areas better. But I can mess with that on my monitor settings as well instead of just right here. Field of view. Okay, this is a huge one. Most people um, play with the field of view. It starts out, if you start playing this game, it'll start out at 70. That's actually really bad. So the field of view. Basically what it does is if you have a 70 field of view, it's right here, if you bump it up, oh well, if you, if 70 is right here, if you bump it up to 90, you can kind of see more and it opens up your field of view. And then if you take it all the way up to what I have it at 110, it would, you know, really open up your field of view. And as it says, it can kind of cause to disorient things and make them look not like they were intended, it kind of stretches them out a little bit maybe, but you can see more, so it is a little better. Um, I highly recommend, if even if you don't really know what I'm talking about, you don't really care about it, just put it on 90, you're, you're safe there, that's going to help you out a lot, it's going to help you see more. If you, have a, if you have a tighter field of view, like it's on 70, you're going to uh, you're going to be able to see farther, right? It's going to zoom in. But when you take it out like this, when you put it on 100, and you go from you go from 90 to 100, it kind of spreads it out, right? So you don't you don't have that zoom. It kind of spreads it out. Just really mess with it and look at it with yourself, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I highly recommend you at least put it on 90. And don't put it on 110 like this unless you have like a really good monitor because it does mess with your graphics a little bit and if you don't have a good monitor it's just gonna be hard to see things from far away. Ah, sprint view shake, minimal, I should definitely have that on minimal because I don't want my screen to shake too much. Master volume, you want all the sound effects, you want to be able to hear everything so you want that at 100. Music volume, not really necessary, so I'll put that on zero, and this is for your chat so you can hear people. But yeah, that's basically it. I hope you guys found that somewhat helpful. Um, like I said, that video might not help you too much, but I also have videos that help you improve your aim, movement, positioning, that are going to help you guys a lot, so go ahead and check them out. Um, obviously I stream on Twitch, so if you want to stop by, say hey, ask me any other questions you have, I'd be happy to help you there. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for hanging out, guys.